The problem that I see with a lot of people's understanding around the right to freedom of expression and this is what a lot of the criticism that is leveled against somebody like Thunderfoot is based on in my opinion even if people are not expressing it that clearly is that a lot of people seem to have a basic misunderstanding as to what exactly is entailed in the right to freedom of expression and how that applies to everybody involved in when there is some sort of a dispute going on. Of course freedom of expression itself just means that you have a right to give expression to your personal identity, your personality, your, the way you are as a human being and that means giving expression to the things you like to do, the things you don't like to do, um, give expression to your opinions and so on. That's all covered under freedom of expression. But of course inevitably when you do give you know your opinions for example, when you do express yourself you will find that there are some people out there who are not pleased with what they're hearing or what they're seeing, who are not happy with your expressions. And the misunderstanding is that there are some people, and I think, you know, Thunderfoot is, if not in that camp, then certainly leaning towards it. And the biggest problem, of course, is that even if he personally does have some level of understanding as to what the implications are with regard to the whole of the dispute, an awful lot of his fan base the thunder drones, as I call them, don't get it at all. And Thunderfoot, what I would, my biggest criticism at Thunderfoot currently would be that he is completely, if he does understand this himself, he's completely failing to communicate any of that level of understanding to his fan base, so that those in his following who do cross the line readily and unabashedly get the message that they are crossing a line and that they should pull back to being on the correct side of the line, so to speak. But let me get to the point. Sorry that it took me so long. Let me get to the point. You see, people seem to think that because they have this right to freedom of expression, that the other person, the person who feels offended by this, who feels hurt by it, and who gives expression to how they feel about what they've just seen or heard, that they should, should not say anything, that they should shut up, that they should get a sense of humor. You know, that's the sort of expressions you stand to hear, that those people some even go as far as saying they don't have the right to say anything because I have the right to be an offensive prick. You, who feels offended by this, don't have the right to give expression to your offense. Wrong. That's not how it works. And that's what I mean when I say that freedom of expression cuts both ways. I have the right, you have the right, to express yourself in ways that other people find offensive. They equally have a right to give expression to being offended, to say how offended they are. Of course, you're crossing the line when you're trying to browbeat the other side in the dispute. When you try to get somebody to shut up, when you try to silence them, when you try to bully them. That's when you've crossed the line. And that is where I see a lot of definitely Thunderfoot supporters, if not Thunderfoot himself, fail miserably where they are trying to bully. Equally, of course, similarly, there are some Muslims 
who are offended by things such as cartoons about Mohammed, who also cross the line and who also engage in activities that are completely unacceptable. You see, freedom of expression, the right to freedom of expression means that you have a right to give your opinion. So you have a right, for example, if you are a Muslim and you are offended by a cartoon about Muhammad, you have a perfect right to say how offensive you find that cartoon and how you wish that the people making that cartoon would not have made it and how you would ask them to please not make cartoons like that. What you don't have a right to do, of course, is to go, go out into the street and to riot and to disturb the peace and to cause criminal damage and to engage in acts of violence or to even kill somebody. Of course you have no such right. Equally, you wouldn't have the right to browbeat or to bully or to try to pressurize somebody into silence or into not publishing cartoons. And that is something that proponents on both sides should understand Anybody who is engaged in this particular dispute or any dispute like it should understand that freedom of expression means that people can say things that they can express themselves in a way that you find unacceptable, that you find unpleasant, that you are displeased with, that you find hurtful, that you find offensive. You don't have the right to silence them. You don't have the right to tell them to shut up and to go away. What you have a right to do, if you are in any way displeased with the way somebody else is expressing themselves, is to turn around and walk away. Is to say, I don't want to hear it anymore. You look at the guy who is shouting their offensive opinions on the corner on his soapbox in Hyde Park and you walk away and leave them to it. And that is something that people on both sides of this dispute, or whatever you want to call it, it's something that people on both sides um, could maybe take a bit of interest in. That is a way to deal with the freedom of expression of somebody that you disagree with, that you don't like, that you find offensive. Turn around and walk away.